Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for your aggressive leadership in behalf of uh, TPP and trade. I think I heard you say in your opening comments, if I've written it down here, that you have um, met 1,500 times with members of Congress on trade. Is that right? 1,250 times, just on 1,250. All right. Uh, of the 1,250, have you met with the majority leader, uh, Harry Reid? Uh, I have met with the majority leader. And his response to uh, any movement on trade or TPA or fast track during this session of Congress was? Well, uh, I think uh, 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 Leader Reid's position on trade agreements I think is, is well known, but as a leader he's also uh, worked with the administration and worked on a bipartisan basis to move trade agreements. Did, he give, you, did he give you any indication there was any wiggle room that we could do something like this in this uh, in this session, like the chairman would like to see and everybody else would like to see? Well, I think what our, our view is is that we're, we'd like to see TPA move forward as and when this committee is ready to work on it and, and move it forward. And we look forward to working with the chairman. And the chairman's going to do a great job, and so will the ranking member and all the rest of us uh, as well. I just am worried a little bit about the majority leader. I hope you can fill his glass. His glass is half empty. Make a glass full if you could, sir. Uh, I'm not going to mention the vice president's meeting with alleged vice president's meeting with the House and uh, assuring uh, members over there that uh, uh, people worried about union concerns. Don't worry, we're not going to have any trade bill. April 4, 44 of us uh, wrote to you and Secretary Vilsack to express our concerns regarding the European Union's protectionist geographical indications brand new concept, or GIs, which uh, they are insisting upon in trade negotiations under TTIP. If the EU were to have its way, common products such as Parmesan, bologna, and this is a lot of bologna, and black forest ham would no longer be able to label themselves that way. That's ridiculous. Uh, I am not interested in the UA dictating what we in America i.e. the breadbasket to the world, more especially Kansas, can and cannot label its products. You responded to her letter, and I appreciate that very much, uh, but I'd like to hear what our negotiating position again is against the EU in regards to geographical indications and what assurance can you provide the members of this committee, and more especially the producers of meat and dairy and cheese that a final agreement with the EU do will not prohibit these common food names. Well, uh, we share your concerns completely, uh, Senator, and uh, we have made very clear to the European Union that uh, we uh, oppose their GI system, uh, that we think it's unnecessary, and that it's inappropriate for, for, uh, for our trade agreement. Uh, and I'll just give you an example. We have uh, uh, several Parmesan Reggiano products registered here in the United States, and the EU exports billions of dollars of cheese and meats to the U.S. under these various names. We're not able to export any of our feta cheese or any of our Parmesan cheese to the EU. So they're able to live quite well under our system. We're not able to live uh, at nearly as well under their system. And we've made clear that we think the common name approach and the trademark approach that exists here in the United States is the more appropriate. What was their approach to a very logical presentation that you have just now defined or explained? Uh, I've not yet convinced them. But we will continue to work and make clear that we think the common name and trademark approach allows room for, uh, for, for us to, uh, to, to have access to each other's markets. You might have them read uh, Green Eggs and Ham, see if that might do something. I have one more question with regards to cool. Many of us uh, here who represent agriculture are waiting for a final ruling on the WTO regarding mandatory country of origin labeling or cool. Do you have any um, idea when we can expect a final ruling? I will have to get back to you on that. It is uh, uh, still in uh, litigation, and uh, uh, Canada and Mexico have not dropped their case, and so I'll, I'll get back to you on the precise timing. Well, if the United States were to lose the case, again, large sectors of our economy, especially agriculture, would be subject to retaliation from Canada and Mexico. Are we taking any uh, steps to prevent retaliation if it is found that COOL does indeed violate our WTO obligations? Well, we believe that, that the, uh, the, the rule that, that has been developed is WTO compliant, 
And so uh, we've argued that at the WTO, and we'll await the decision of the WTO. And then, as we do in other cases, um, we'll, we'll engage with our trading partners. But we firmly believe that it is compliant. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Roberts. Senator Isaacson is next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.